Alaska, don't plant no windbreaks. Worried, wondering why your fields are blown away, in Nebraska? Don't plant no damn windbreaks. Can driveway in June and so uh, that's what we're going to cover here I hope you seen that little clip there first that was back in March in Nebraska oh good grief man that wind was something else so anyway uh, yeah out in Nebraska and, you know the funny thing is I'm just gonna say this funny thing is all those states are still cutting down their, their wind breaks that they did have and then that they've got all these signs, help stop soil erosion. Good, duh, duh, this soil erosion. Soil erosion is, and they know how to stop it. And then, especially them corporate farmers, that, yeah, that extra 10 feet might give us another bushel. So we're gonna cut those trees down, get another 10. Well, you don't know why our, our soil dries out so quick and while the wind blows our topsoil away. There's a uh, rest area in Iowa and, been through that you've probably seen it showing the depth of the topsoil how it has eroded over the years let it blow away boys and girls let it blow away you keep scratching your head wondering why our fields are blowing away okay that's my rant for today sorry so i started out with june with this utility truck going from um texas to michigan it paid all right. I can't complain about it. Uh, when I first seen it, uh, I thought, oh, good grief, this thing's going to be so rough riding. But it actually rode pretty good. Didn't get great. It had a 6.7, uh, I believe 6.7 in it. Not the greatest fuel economy with those 6.7s or L9s in medium duties. Just ain't. It's a, they turn faster in a, say, an X15. They don't get as good as fuel mileage. People don't understand that, but you know, anytime you got an engine turning faster, it's not going to be as efficient as one turning slower, generally speaking. So anyway, this one uh, I took up to Michigan. Um, just really nothing special about it. Like I said, it was new. It did have a little bit of fuel. I think I got like a hundred miles before I had to put fuel in it. 50 gallon tanks. I hate those things. Uh, so anyway, this is the uh, this is the first one I took. Now this next one was a uh, blue T six eighty from a flatbed company everybody knows and it went from Tulsa to Illinois. Illinois? Was it Illinois? Yes it was. Uh, again now this one I got uh, probably 11, 11-ish 11 miles per gallon out of it running 62 to 64 someplace in there and it was a pretty good truck very clean they had this thing super clean kudos to this company uh, you know they sold it as opposed to this last one I took was pigsty inside but it ran good I like the T680s very nice inside very comfortable 
I like the mid roof. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that was this one, and uh, I like these shorter runs where I can pick them up one day and deliver them the next. That way, I'm not married to a uh, truck for long length of time, which doesn't really bother me. But as long as it's nice and clean. But yeah, this one was nice. There you go, that's your flip flops for you. She's gonna be a good trucker one of these days. I love when the little girl it loves tells me I'm good. I don't have to pay for my coffee. So anyway. This uh, next one was just a little short run, I believe. I've got everything in order. I think it's kind of a brownish. Peterbilt 579. It had enough fuel to make it the, let's see, did it? I put $50 in. Uh, I'm trying to think of why I put $50 in, but maybe, oh, because <laughs> I was taking it back to Chicago and, and I wanted to make sure I had enough if I got stuck in a backup. Um, I delivered it between red and quarter tank, so I, it was a good move. Because I did get in the back up. Um, so yeah, it um, pretty simple move other than it took me that back up took me uh, three and a half hours to go 32 miles. So, there you have that one. And the next one is the one that I had the breakdown on that I went in the old one. something and I was probably two and a half hours at pickup but I made it to I can get around him real quick there's nothing coming you could slow down because you know I'm going to get by you I'm going to spook your horses they should be trained but... so uh, yeah I get 200 miles I'm coming out of the Joplin um, scale house and it, it misses a gear. I'm like, oh crap, okay. It's automatic. So it goes, I get it back in gear, get up to speed, about a mile later, it comes out again. It stops wanting to go into gear or stay, or stay in gear. It go in. Even sitting there idle, it would go like third and get ready to take off and then go back to neutral. Okay, so I lost my. I lost money on this one, and this happens. And I'm telling you again, if you're the type to get your panties in a wad because you lose money, you're not going to like drive away. I put $200 worth of fuel in it. Um, and I had, I forgot now, I, I forgot about this until I didn't find the receipts while I was doing this research. But this uh, cost me 41 in tolls to come across Oklahoma. So you can add 41 at the end to where I have my totals. So, but anyway, 
uh, as you can see, the settlement was something like $196. So I lost lost a little bit on that. Uh, my dispatcher was great, tried to get me as much money as he could, but I only made it 200 and something miles. So that was that one. Uh, you know, you take your licks and you get up and go again. So that's that. As Forrest comes to say, that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, this next one. Uh, you know, the boards were getting thin. And it was getting hot here in Oklahoma and I wanted to go north and this was about a six hour deadhead to get to this one. I think it was about 300 miles. Maybe not about six hours. Yeah, I think it was. I think I left the house early that morning. But anyway, it's an old utility body from a uh, auction house. And I get there and the batteries are completely dead. It turns out somebody left the interior light on. And it's almost on in the red on the empty Oh, good. And it was a Monday. Was that Monday? I think it was Monday. I don't know. Now I don't know. But <laughs> the one next to it, I looked at it, found the keys for it. They had them hid. I knew probably where they hit them. It had three quarters of a tank in it, and it started right up. I thought, now why couldn't I get this one? But I had the small gauge jumper cables. I tried to jump that one off, and it just wasn't going to happen. So, well, that, fortunately, that auction house had a mechanic shop, and they had a jumper for big trucks, and they come jumped it for me. Uh, again, not the greatest fuel economy uh, on these things. I, if you do eight or nine, you're doing something. I've heard people say, oh, I get 12 mile iron. 12 miles a gallon. I've never seen one of these, and I've taken a lot of them from, from just about everybody. If they've got a 6.7 or L9 Cummins, they're not going to get that great of fuel economy. And this, and now maybe if you do 50 mile an hour, I do 62 to 64 usually. So anyway, I this one's going up to Indiana. I picked it up in Missouri, and. Pretty uneventful except for sleeping in the car when it's kind of hot. But hey, that's why you got a tow car set up to sleep in. So. Okay, on this next one.
Okay, on this next one, uh, it was going from uh, Ohio, Cleveland, I believe. Ohio to Illinois. I forget where. This old yellow, this trucking company, picked up that truck company. Again, uh, you know, I called. Yeah, it's ready. I get there. Batteries are completely dead. And I walk into the maintenance shop and they're on break. And I asked the super. I said, now, is there a disconnect on this truck I'm not finding? Or are the batteries completely dead? Well, everybody starts smirking like, Dis because disconnect. Da, da, da. Like, he didn't apparently know that some of these trucks have battery disconnects. I think if you're a supervisor of the mechanics, you don't know that. But anyway. Of course, he sent the uh, youngest, newest guy out there to replace them. They replaced the batteries. I don't know why they just didn't jump them. <clears throat> but the truck fired up. This was a 10-speed. It's always nice to get to drive manuals when you when you can. Uh, the truck was fairly clean. They, they could have done a little bit better job cleaning it out. But there again, it had a X-15 in it, and I like the X-15s. No, 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 back up. Beep, 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 beep. This had a uh, high car engine in it, 455. And in my experience, high car engines get the best fuel economy. Just gonna put it out there. X-15 is probably close second, but uh, Detroit, eh, Bobo's get the worst. In my, I, and I'm not. I'm only talking probably two to three miles a gallon difference, but still, that makes when you're paying for it, that makes a difference. So, anyway, this one went back to Illinois, pretty uneventful, except for I got turned around um, in Chicago. Yeah. I was coming out of that last toll plaza in Indiana. It was late afternoon, sun was in my eyes. I reach up and pull the visor down. And when it comes out of that clip, it is like spring loaded. I thought it was going to take my head off. I duck. I ain't fighting with this thing <laughs> going down the road. Trying to get it back up to where it blocks the sun so I can see. And apparently at the 80 90 split, I took 90. I needed to take 80, just straight across, no frills, straight across. Well, I ended up on 9, and I went quite a bit north, for, because I didn't want to get off with just any exit and end up someplace I shouldn't have. Yeah, that was an ordeal. Uh, so it, I was about two hour delay getting to the rest area. Look, excuse me. Luckily, I did find a place to rest that night. Got up next morning, took it into the dealer, dropped it. So uh, this one uh, also short miles, uh, good pay though. Okay, this next one, I went from that place up to Milwaukee for this uh, other company, grabbed a uh, day cab, huge International 9900. I seen that thing, uh, oh my gosh, because I was taking it down to Chattanooga. I uh, thought this thing's gonna eat my lunch on fuel. So I was a little bit uh, relieved when I opened the hood and I believe it did have an X-15. I was very relieved and um, this was a 13 speed drove great it had more of a I think it was a I think it was a 2015 but it had a more old school look on the inside and I really liked it I actually enjoyed this truck and once I realized uh, I wasn't gonna get uh, hose on the fuel uh, I think I had put I don't know hundred dollars in something like that I can't remember but it rode good it drove good uh, it would get up and go so I uh, 
every once in a while you get surprised by something like this and uh, it turns out to be pretty nice.
you know, I also kind of suck on getting less expensive fuel. So notice I did not say cheap or inexpensive. I said less expensive fuel. Um, I'm work mud flat, but sometimes I feel like this one, the last one I took, I got fuel in Missouri at 536. And when I checked at month left there was a station I had passed 15 miles back it was 515 now do I go back at basically 30 miles round trip which would cost me probably about two or three gallons no I just paid 536 and went on so uh, there's lots of things I could do to, to save a little bit more money and I'm working on those but uh, overall uh, I think I brought home in my pocket, $4,700. And some people, well, I don't include your food. Don't include my food when I'm at home. I actually eat better when I'm at home than I do on the road. I don't eat that much. I've told you before. I probably don't eat $20 a day when I'm on the road. Uh, eat usually one meal a day. When I'm home, it's usually ribeye and eggs and all that good stuff like that. So, motels I spent four nights, five nights out in motels. Not a big motel person, don't like motels. I don't get it, these people go, but my company pays for motels. Okay, that's your thing. There again, I don't like the slamming of the doors and the hooping and hollering and TV's blaring and kids running up and down the halls all hours of the night and stuff or, or you know just any number of things people stomping across the floor above you or you know headboards banging against the wall next to you crap like that I try to I, I, I put motels right up there with truck stops I try to stay out of them so uh, I just don't spend I'd rather sleep in my car than, than put up a crap in a motel. So, uh, anyway, now, uh, some of y'all looking and going, you know, well, that's, I can make that flipping burgers. If you can make that flipping burgers on the least amount that I worked, you go for it. I don't know any place that pays you roughly $470 a trip to uh, net to uh, flip burgers, but hey, that's your thing, you go for it. You do you. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't take into consideration, yeah, your motel's a write-off, but it goes in against your per diem. So, this little tow car is netting me, what, 62 cents a mile now? Something like that. In the month of June, I had almost 12,000 miles. Now, that's deadhead miles. And that's towed miles. Deadhead miles, probably, I don't know, probably half that, maybe a little less than half, I'm not sure. But, so at the end of the year, come tax time, I'm getting most of this money back. If not all, I don't know what that is, that 12,000 times 0.62 or whatever. But I'm, uh, you know, that's, that's the huge advantage a lot of people won't tell you about with a tow car. You get to claim your miles. All the miles. I had someone say, no, you can only claim the miles that you drive. Where does that say that in the IRS code? I read the IRS code. It says, it says uh, use of your car. It doesn't say it has to be under power. You know, nowhere I've seen it said that. The people I have I've done my taxes have never said that. They said, you're using your car, you claim the miles. Okay. So uh, that's a huge thing. So as you can see, if I really wanted to bust my butt, I could have done really well. Uh, I just don't. My stuff's, most of my stuff's paid for, my house paid for, my land paid for. I've worked hard all my life to live a simple, life where I didn't have to bust my butt every day to pay bills just to get up the next day and bust my butt to pay bills. What is this? Ah, oh, cheap life jacket. Sorry. Uh, so, you 
you know, car, I have a couple of little balances on credit cards. I have a little note on this car that keeps my credit active and looking good. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. So I am working on a bigger project later on this year. Maybe next year. I don't know. It would be a change for the channel, but other than that, this is kind of if you know what you. I'd say this is probably the minimum you could do if you work work it, work your fuel stops, stay in the damn motel, stop eating three times a day, and crack a barrel and an iron skillet and all that stuff. If, if, if you frugal, this could be a darn good setup. Anyway, thank y'all for watching. Let me know your comments. You got any questions? Leave them down below. Hey, Donald, I'm going that way.